and we will discuss how to multiply a matrix by that. So, <coughs> so that's that's the plan. So how we score and how sparse matrices are related to graphs. Actually, the algorithms for sparse matrices are typically related to the, from the graphs and vice versa. Many graph problems can be written in terms of doing something with sparse matrices. Well, parallel uh, so the set, but on then we'll start about start talking about softbox. So many of there are many applications of uh, sparse matrices. So the largest class is still is a mathematical modeling. Still mathematical modeling when we solve partial differential equations in many areas or circuit design and so on. They are, these are all problems with local interactions because the differential operator is a local operator and there is no other, okay, you, you, you still have to do that. Even if you have all this data driven and gross other stuff, you still have to solve partial differential equations. Uh, the second big class is the graph, so-called graph mining. When you have uh, uh, a graph, you have an adjacency matrix of this graph and then if you if we only have to go in the graph, graph we have only local interaction, this leads to sparse matrices. And for example, graph clustering, one of the ways to do graph clustering is to use either, uh, to compute certain eigenvalues of, of the adjacent of, of not of the adjacency matrix, but of the sparse matrix which is constructed from the graph. You will have such problem in, in your homework, this is called Laplacian of the graph. Uh, there are also other types of problems with in data analysis where you have local interaction in one of the really industrial scale examples that these are recommended systems when you have users you have products users buy some products or do some actions and this interaction between users and products is also sort of a graph and then you have a corresponding matrix and one of the most efficient methods for working with recommended system is still computing the single value decomposition or partial single decomposition of a large sparse matrix. Yes, and these are all examples when you have objects and then you have certain types of relation between objects. And not everyone is connected to, to everyone. So from PDs it's, it's quite clear where this appears. Well the, the standard fluid fly example. Well if you know what fluid fly is. Well that's that you know what fluid fly example please by fruit fly in October November. Do you know where, where this, this comes from? That's very popular in academic community to talk about fruit fly examples. Yeah, when, when there was an election in United States, and there was this woman, Sarah Palin, I think her name is, and then she basically said something like, we should not invest our money in the study of fruit fly problems. There was some project or study in biology studying fruit fly. And then everyone in research said, this is my fruit fly problem. No one needs this problem, but when we study the methods, we get useful insight. Yeah, sometimes I can say it, uh, but well, if you come to a conference or to a workshop, that's my fruit fly problem. We developed a new fancy method. Well, in deep learning, you may say, well, fruit fly is missed or C5 10 or something like that. It's not so interesting, but still some people, including top guys, they present the result on NIST for whatever reason. Okay, so this is called Laplace equation. Uh, the sum of second order derivative equal to the right hand side, and we put additional zero boundary condition here. And if you apply if only one dimensional case, or we can write down the final difference approximation. There is also a much better way of doing that. But well, okay, that's what many of you have seen, probably hated at some point. That's what I was doing after a FISTEC course on computational mathematics. But this is actually a very beautiful mathematics behind that. So you have the second order derivative to approximate that one way to show is to use Taylor series. But again, there are better ways of understanding why this formula is a good approximation in which norm and so on. So the right formula is here, so called sober spaces. And then you do not need fourth order derivative, which the solution actually does not have. But again, 
and this is now a linear character which will act on the function values at specific points. And if you write this in the matrix form, that's the system of equations you get. And this is our favorite triangular system of equations. Triangular linear system. Well, it's sparse, it's also triplets, it's symmetric. That's a very nice example. And it's triangular. Okay, for example, if we want to solve a linear system, we can do it, of course, by factorizing, by using a unit composition. And any new factors will be sparse. So the n factor will be pi diagonal, the u factor will be pi diagonal, and so on. So this, this is an example. So this is the best possible case. For a sparse matrix, you can never get better. Okay, the best would be, of course, diagonal matrix, but something is Besides diagonal, this is tri-diagonal. If you have a tri-diagonal matrix, then you're like, you don't actually need any, anything else. But if you go from one dimension to two dimensions, so now uh, the function depends on two variables. The function depends only on two variables. On, on, depends on two variables. And then after discretization, you will need to find the value of the function at the point ij. And that would be a system of equations. So the system of equations is written for one particular node. And you will, so basically if the grid is n times n, the, there will be n squared unknowns. The number of unknowns will be n squared. And the matrix will be n squared times n squared. So in some sense you, you may say that even the solution is a matrix. Okay. That's one way of looking at this equation, looking this is not a linear system with a vector unknown, but a, but a linear system with a matrix unknown. So it's called so-called linear matrix equation. But typically what people do, they still want to get a linear system where the unknown is a vector. So we take this two-dimensional vector, probably I have to try to write down something. No, nothing will happen. Sorry, yeah, we have technical problems because our fancy iPad stuff has updated. Approximation, for example, of weight matrices and vector networks, but there are many 
other applications of this Kronecker product approximation or sum of Kronecker products. So if you have a matrix and you want to approximate it by sum of Kronecker products, this problem is in fact equivalent to the best low rank approximation of a certain auxiliary matrix. This is a very nice algebraic result. But here, this is the simple rule of thumb, how we make two-dimensional Laplacian out of one dimension. We take a Kronecker product of a one-dimensional Laplacian times the identity matrix plus an identity times the Kronecker product. And the meaning of this is quite simple. So here we have the derivative which acts only in the x variable and does not act in the y variable. And this guy acts only in the y variable but doesn't act on the, in, the, in the x variable. And then you add that up. So this is the discretization of the partial derivative, second partial derivative over x. And this is the discretization of the second partial derivative over y. So in the block form, it has this. So this is so-called block tridiagonal matrix. And each block is also tridiagonal. Seems like a nice structure. And sometimes people say that this is a five diagonal matrix. But it is not. Because, OK, there are three diagonals here. And then, and then, then there, are, there is also a diagonal. OK, let's look at this row. Three diagonals here, one diagonal here, one diagonal here. So, OK, five diagonals. But there is a gap. There is a lot of zeros between these three main diagonals and this one diagonal. And this, this gap increases when you increase the number of blocks or increase the block size. So then if you try to run some algorithms that are suited for so-called banded matrices, so banded matrices, the matrix is called banded, not banded, banded, with band. Uh, if it has only k non-zero super diagonals or k non-zero sub diagonals. These zeros, if you, for example, start doing a real decomposition of Gaussian elimination, they will immediately fill in, and you will get a band, a band that matrix with a band that is square root of the matrix size. And actually, all of this is a very simple structure. Using this simple structure to get an efficient solver is not a trivial task. So for this particular matrix, you can, with, with, with this matrix here, delta 1, you can get a fast algorithm using uh, a variant of discrete cosine transform. Because you can diagonalize this, this matrix by cosine transform, so you get a linear complexity. But if you use, for example, partial differential equation with non-constant coefficient, you will still get the matrix of this structure. But a fast algorithm for such matrices is not a trivial task. So actually, if you do not use any approximations, you cannot do a fast direct solver faster than n to the 1.5. So it's still better than n cube. It's still better than n square. But it's still worse than n. So you cannot get a linear complexity for this for, for, for this kind of matrices. So, and this is related to the property. So if you view this as an adjacency matrix of a certain graph, then it falls from the properties of this graph. And we will discuss that later on. So probably I'm not mistaken. Let's make a five minutes break at this point. And we'll